What's good, YouTube? And Twitch, because we're live to Twitch and not YouTube for bonus stream on Tuesday. Join Tuesdays on Twitch. We might be live some Tuesdays. Be sure to set your notifications for that. But today we're looking at this ban list. It's been a while since we peeked over at this. The update is no sooner than November 20th. It's a little whiles away. But just scrolling on through, there's a card that bugs me that it's on here. There's a card that doesn't sit well with me necessarily being here. One card above that all-famous Pot of Greed is Pot of Avarice. Pot of Avarice is a card that really I, I just don't see the need to go ahead and stay on this list. Pot of Avarice, it's, it's a pretty good card, all right? It reads, target five monsters in your graveyard. Shuffle all five into the deck and then draw two cards. So yeah, oh, you get draw, to draw two cards. But starting with four cards in hand, a lot of decks wouldn't be able to recycle the resources if, say, a, a certain hand trap was touching down or even be able to activate. Let's look at Droll and Lockbird in this format. Well, if I draw the first thing that's going to allow you to search in most decks, it's unlikely that Pot of Avarice will even be able to activate during the turn. Well, nay, impossible to activate it the very same turn. And then you're stacking up resources with a card in hand that no longer helps you set up on the field or gets you there. Then we do have a direct counter also in Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Similarly, her other ghost sister, Ghost Bell, also happens to stop Pot of Avarice. I think hand traps are something from an era that are completely different from when Pot of Avarice was previously legal. We have direct counters, hard counters, roundabout counters, and all the main hand traps played in competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! versus Pot of Avarice. I think that when we look at this card, it's aged relatively well. The amount of resources in the graveyard don't fit every single deck, and a lot of decks are trying to actually resource their graveyard continuously let's take a look at say true draco you have the true king's return and you actually want to deal with the cards there and you don't play that many monsters to actually want to recycle it with pot of avarice rather than your natural true draco cards that actually recycle your graveyard you look at sky strikers in the current format you would have to wait until you really stack those extra deck monsters down into the graveyard and you still want Ray to continue to do her thing for you you don't want to send it back either I feel like Pot of Avarice has kind of gone from an era where you gladly want to resource those cards back into the deck such as Lone Fire Blossom yes I want all my Lone Fires back in deck to be able to go Lone Fire Lone Fire Lone Fire once again to an era where it's I want those cards in graveyard let's give another direct example of that right Seer Malbranch of the Burning Abyss. This is a card and a mill deck, a mill deck most likely to use Pot of Avarice, that you would naturally say, I want to keep my Seer and a Dante. I want to be able to continue to cycle these. I want Seer to cycle Dante. I want to bring back Dante out and recycle Seer. And so you're looking at a deck that actually wants to mill, but saying, I want to keep these particular resources. Also, Skarm. You don't want to send back the Skarm before the end phase. There's actually a lot going on with Burning Abyss. And there's even another card that I don't know that it's power crept pot of avarice but it is an option but it has a lot of restrictions and Sekka's light Sekka's light is a choice for a lot of ba players and it allows you if you have no spell or traps in the graveyard so you're not playing any other spell or traps likely to activate this draw two cards also for the rest of this duel after you activate this card you can't activate spell or trap effects except for Sekka's light and then you can also banish this card from your graveyard reveal a monster in hand shuffle it into the deck and then draw a card so it not only gets you two but balances your hand which seems a lot bigger for a deck like burning abyss the main mill deck now let's take a, a step back from burning abyss our, our prime example here right because we see the replacement card somewhat we see what we would rather be playing and and yeah maybe some burning abyss would like a couple of traps and then to go with pot of avarice but this is something you can activate off the get immediately and go with it rather than having to wait, go through your turn, activate something that could get drolled, and give droll a use. Let's let's think about Lightsworn. That's that's a name you might not have heard in a while, right? When you think of Lightsworn, you think of one of the ultimate mill decks, something that could put those resources back. But there's another card that likes you having cards in the graveyard in that deck, and likes being in the graveyard itself, Fairy Tale Snow. I feel like even the decks 
that go for the graveyard since we have lost that grass is greener on the other side tastier whatever you have it we just want our cards in the graveyard and want to resource the game from the graveyard we've evolved to this point to where the deck is the core resource to where yes our deck holds a lot of cards we want to power out but then our graveyard has become a secondary resource and we don't want to perhaps send the cards back as much as we once used to we have cards that want to recycle resource reuse the grave versus sending those cards back for advantage now pot of avarice is not a direct extender let's get that out of the way you're shuffling the cards back and you're getting two cards in hopes to draw a further extender for your turn you still have the chance to draw say if this were at multiple other pot of avarices other cards that do draw like pot of desires you're, you're realistically looking at drawing into what you hope to be an extender by pure chance when you've activated this card because you've played through so much of your turn this card in your hand instead of the blank that is pot of avarice until it is available it could be an extender already if you were to cut it so i feel like pot of avarice here it, it's got it's just downs and then also it, like you have a couple ups right you're recycling the resources you're getting draws if any of those five that you're targeting get banished or something happens to it returns sent somewhere else pot of avarice actually fizzles and there's so many examples actually besides dd crow which was the old counter you have i believe the shark cannon and sky strikers you have like the ability to go ahead and vanish cards and of course we mentioned ghost spell already if, if anything should happen to any of those cards in the graveyard pot of avarice fizzles unlike our great soul charge Again, another card that would like to resource the graveyard. What extenders are you also looking for? Typically, you're looking for cards as extenders that go for the graveyard that honestly might maybe should be on this list, such as Soul Charge should maybe be forbidden instead of at one monster reborn you're looking at resourcing the graveyard there too when we come and look at the other spells on this list in relation to our actual pot of avarice we see cards with infinite loops we see cards with crazy draw power again infinite loops Cards that take your opponent's cards scot free and let you attack with them for the turn and then use them as link or synchro material. Uh, unchecked, searchable draw power in Chicken Game. Cards that freeze everything. Cards that rip from hand. Cards that are allowing you to summon your banished pile. Cards that take care of all spell and traps on the field, basically cost free face up and face down and allow you to reuse your own that are already face up a card that lets you draw three and discard two which again resourcing the graveyard destroying all spell and traps slash your opponents only a card that limits players on what they can play it, it just doesn't fit in here right a card that lets you resource your deck for otk slash fdks mass driver a direct fdk card metamorphosis summon so many different fusions from my extra deck and just get them out there a card that lets you draw four should it stay out painful choice the most broken spell arguably in the entire game pot agreed a direct draw to without any resource premature burial resource the graveyard and try to bounce premature burial back to use it again rank up magic argent chaos force this one ended up here in a different kind of way summoning one unbeatable-ish boy snatch shield taking my opponent's monster spell book of judgment just uh, insane super rejuvenation draw all the cards that grass looks greener resource your entire deck into the graveyard to use it and the forceful century rip out pot of avarice just doesn't fit in it doesn't feel like it needs to be here versus every single other spell card on the forbidden list pot of avarice is the odd one out it doesn't do what it used to do in today's game in my opinion and john's getting upset i'm not upset chat i'm having a good time i'm passionate about Yu Gi Oh. i love Yu Gi Oh. and honestly i'm glad for this fnl list if this was a cycling game if this was a game that actually cycled its sets and cut off cards from the past rather than just directly putting them up here when they were a problem i don't know that i would be playing this game similar to like magic and pokemon yeah it's cool to see cards back come back in pokemon but I don't know that I would play this game the same, uh, or as much should we see that in the game, but definitely I feel like Pot of Avarice, when we look at it, 
versus every single other spell on here, it doesn't necessarily deserve it. There's more powerful spells, as mentioned, such as Soul Charge on this list in the one slot. And while uh, it was actually brought up, I think, by uh, another person on here, Spirals could maybe abuse it relatively well. You do have your, uh, your Spiral Helix actually looking at a hard once per turn. And many of these other cards, I feel like it just belongs over here, up and out. It is in the OCG. I wanted to save that argument kind of for last. But there's so many counters in today's game. There's so much not going for Pot of Avarice with how the graveyard has developed as a resource. And that's my argument for it. You don't have to agree with me, but please like the video if you enjoyed discussion. If you have an opposing viewpoint, please put it down in the comment section down below. I'd love to see and hear why you might think that this card should stay on the FNL list. It's not my personal opinion, but some people actually will take that viewpoint. And I'd just love to hear why. And uh, finally, there was a mention... If if we were to errata this card, if you had to errata it to bring it back, I'm not a big fan of erratas, but I think a good check and balance might be that if you target five monsters in your graveyard, shuffle them into the main deck, stopping you from sending back extra deck materials slash resources. Maybe that's the best way to balance it. But even then, like Burning Abyss, like I said, doesn't care too much about sending back Dante. They like to keep it in there to recycle it with Seer. In my opinion, uh, that would be the best check and balance to kind of keep that old school feel of it. But I still like the idea of being able to recur those extra deck monsters for all those different counters in the format that currently exist to it. So that's my opinion. Again, subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video if you enjoyed the discussion. And Twitch chat, thank you for being here live. Join those Tuesday live streams usually seven o'clock central today started a little bit late but it's always super fun to do these discussions live on stream when they pop up thanks for watching everybody